Alright guys, um, I got something here for you guys. I've been researching, saving up for a long time. I got some power acoustic, I've read a lot of reviews on it. I got a power acoustic uh, razor. Uh, it's a 2500 watt max, I believe 1500 watt, uh, yeah, 1500 watt RMA, uh, it's a bridge, uh, mono amp, which is bridge, only one channel, at 2 ohm. What I got here are a set of Gothic audio, uh, audio acoustic, they're 1200, uh, uh, 2500 watt, 1500 watt RMA. So let's crack these up, open, and let's see what. Oh, yeah. And on top of that, what I'm laying on is a custom built box. Let me uh, see if I got a tape measure really quick. Probably don't. Nope. So just give me a minute, and I will be back with tape measure. Alright guys, got a tape measure. You can see these are two 12 inch holes of one on that side too. Port it. So let's start with the port. The port width is five what the heck? Five and a half, almost five and three quarters. Yeah. The port depth, which is not all the way to the wall, is 19 inches. And the port width it's 13 so that's not bad and these are 12 inch but cut out for 11 inch the depth of it the depth of this box is 21 inches and they're using I believe 1 inch thick yep 1 inch thick MDF on the out and I believe the walls are the same way now the port height is three inches from the bottom of the box up to the wall three inches. So you got the width of it is uh, can't really get it in there. So the whole width of the box. It's 24, yeah, you guys can't see that, it's 24 and a half inches. Uh, I gotta wire, do a bunch of wiring, cause I gotta loop these in to a certain way. But uh, here's, I'll get you guys up close to what the amp is. So, most advanced digital technology, military grade built, built to last, and install me anywhere so this it says fits in virtual any tight spaces which is not bad it's got a control uh, gain control on it um, you basically see it's a 2 amp subwoofer compatible let me get the specs up for you guys if you want to see the specs I'm not going to read them off there you go Go over here. Alright, let's crack it up. I've never seen this amp. So, this is all going to be new to me. That's your high level conversion. Um, I believe it's high. high. That's your owner's manual. I believe that's for your high version. So you use your speakers, your rear channel speakers to run the amp. And here's this little amp. Boy, ain't this little. I mean, I can palm it and I got medium hands and I can palm it not bad. It's got some left to it too. And there's your channels. There's your RC input. Yeah, that's your, yeah, 
that's your high output or yeah that's your high output here's your gain sub sonic bass boost and low pass and then there's your remote um, takes two 25 amp fuses which is a 50 watt your 12 volt DC your remote turn on the ground then you plus and minus for your speaker there's your power and protect mode it's got some long mounting holes which is nice here's some uh, information if you guys want to see it which is not bad I mean let me get the well here you guys can see that that's a 12 inch hole and that's about 12 inches really tiny amp here's your remote cable which is not bad there's your gain controller which is pretty nice and they do include the mounting screws to, for the amp which is nice to see and that's all we got in that box and here's some information on these subs uh, 2.5 dual vo uh, 4 arm ohm voice coil it's 2 ohm stable monoblock amplifier and then you can see that um, yeah best choice used with a power acoustic ra razor monoblock amplifier that's why I picked up the monoblock so let's crack it open and let's see what we got inside nice owner's manual one thing I like about this is it gives you all the charts how to wire in your amp so if you're running four or you want to run three or four of them two or one of each they give you that option they also give you this option because I had to send this information to my buddy because that's what they want and he ended up making that for me which is bigger So yeah, that's not bad. It's give you a your registration card so you can register your subs. Oh, and one thing I did not show you guys. I don't know where. There it is. How wide the box is. I'm going to just do an outside 14. So it's probably 13 inside. You're using half inch, uh, three quarter inch MDF. So probably 13 inside. And let's get this out. Let me get you up on the tripod. There you go. First impression of this sucker. It's heavy. Um, I like the. Don't care about the blue, but I'm not going to look at them every day. It's got a nice raise a logo in the middle, so that's pretty cool. It's got a nice beefy uh, surround on it, which I like. To see that it's not a cheaply made. Um, Here's your magnet for anybody that wants to see it. It's a 2500 watt max 12 inch sub. The 4 ohm, but the dual 4 ohm. So you got one there and one there. So you got two. Let me get this sucker out here. So you got two voice coils, which is not bad. So. And to show you guys, it looks pretty good like this. And it also has
you can remove these and hide your screws underneath so it's not too bad of an idea. I like that idea. Well, let me get the other one out. And the other one's the same way. I think they look good. Uh, for more information on these, uh, here's more of the text on it. More information. Um, I don't know. Yeah. That tells you more about the surround on it. So let me get back to you guys and let me get some wire so we can wire these subs in and show you how to do it. Okay guys, got some speaker wire out now. Got some heavy 14 gauge speaker wire. I'm going to show you guys. This is some heavy 14, almost 12 gauge speaker wire. Ran this for the longest time. I know you guys are probably going to say, oh, you shouldn't be running 14, should get 12. Well, these terminals only supports 16 gauge, and I got to show, almost shoved 12 gauge into them. Alright. Now, if you guys look, with me looking at this picture, this diagram here, Alright, the one I want to do is 2 ohm to a monoblock amplifier. Alright, you guys will probably see, here's your negative on one side. So, let me get the speaker. Alright, I see the negative on one side. Don't matter what side, I mean, they're both going to be the same. But what I like to do is try to keep everything going one way so we're going to jump from a negative on one side of the speaker which I'll take my wire I always go with the stripe I always take the stripe then put that in negative I don't that wasn't in focus was it guys Okay, I put the negative, it's colored, it's colored black and colored red, so I put my stripe in with the black. Okay, now we look at it again. Okay, so that lead will run all the way up to the negative on the other side of the other speaker. Don't matter how you guys do it. So we're going to take the speaker wire here and we're going to feed it down into the box. Then we're going to reach for the other speaker. For being honest, I don't need too much of this cord, so I'm going to just snip off a little of it. Now we're going to snip this other one.
Now it says I got this prepped. Okay. Now we're going to take that negative lead on our diagram here. Take that negative lead and run it over to the negative side of the speaker. Is how we're going to do it. So, let's see. We flip, we'll put it on this one and bring it towards the box. So let's put it on this side and put the negative lead, which is your, I like to use my stripe, on the negative side of this one. Okay, we got that part done. Now it's saying taking the positive lead from this uh, this sub right here, which is on the other side of it, and we're going to run it over to the positive side of the opposite side we did on that one. So it'll be opposite on both. So take our wire here, split it. We're going to put the non striped side on the positive side. All right, there. That's wired in. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to split it, put it on this side. Okay, we're connected. We're, we're running dual, running two fours down to a two ohm. Now, our next lead of wires is going to be a positive to a negative, which you just need a small jump wire for it. Positive to negative, positive to negative. And that'd be your jump. So that be jumping there. Then we'll go into the box, cut the wire down inside the box. And that will connect to our we're not gonna cut into it, we're gonna jump again. Your positive in the the negative and positive, the one we jumped into that speaker, we're going to run a lead out towards the box. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So just give me a so we're going to take another piece of wire that we cut and all we need is just a small enough just need a small section of it I'm going to split it I'm just going to do the ends really quick. Alright, that's one lead done. For one speaker, now we're going to do the other one. Alright, that's one lead done. the other lead done. Alright. Now what we do is take this lead, go on the positive side of the one you started the first time, push it down, and then take your jumper and run it all the way over to the negative side of it. So it'll be positive negative jump wire. We'll do the same thing on this side. Positive. Run it underneath your speaker wire. Okay. We're monoblock now. Alright. Now we're going to take my speaker wire here. And we're going to jump one side. Show you again. We're going to take one 
one side of the negative, which be here, be here, we'll run, put a jumper onto that one, run it straight to the box. No, you guys can't. Run it right to the box, to the output. On the other side, be a positive. So, let me just rough estimate how much I need. It should be right about here. And I got speaker wire left over, which is fine. I'm going to take the speaker wire, split it. Now a lot of people ask me, ask me if I can do you guys a video like this. Well, I'm going to show you how I set up all my subs. And I have never had a bit of problem with none of my subs like this. I do it for home home theater setup. I do it all the time. So we're going to take our new jump lead. Not connected to anything. We're going to hook it to the negative. We're going to pull the negative out. We're going to twist the negative around the around it, the negative and the new negative around it. And then we're going to put it back in the hole. Make sure it's connected. Now we'll do the same thing on this side, but this side will be the positive side. So it would be this one we want to hook to. Alright, now let me get you guys out of the camera, or the holster, and show you what I did. So we're going to do a negative. There it is. We're going to go negative. From, we're going to negative, run it down into our wire, which is that stripe wire I showed you guys. You don't know how well this camera's going to pick up. Yeah, right there. And then we're going to bring it all the way over to the negative side of this one. Alright, now we're going to go back over here. We're going to take the positive side, which is a non-stripe, run it all the way over to the positive side. Alright, then we're going to take your negative, run that jump lead all the way over to your positive side on this side. So, and just like this one, negative to positive. And then we're going to take a extra lead wire, hook it to the negative terminal, and run it to the bottom of the box. Come over here, hook to the positive terminal, that extra lead wire. Hook to the bottom of the box. And what I mean by the bottom of the box is down in there. I have to get a flashlight and see where to connect it at, but it'd be down in there, be the positive and negative. So when you hook up your amp, you can just hook to your negative wire. I think, hang on, don't quote me on that one. Yeah. So this side would be the positive side. So I'll hook positive to this, negative to the other side. So all you need to do is take your lead wire, take your lead wire, drop it down the box. Just imagine that it's connected. So that's the only wire you have. And then it would be the same thing on this side too, which I'm not going to pull this one up and show you. So just give me a few minutes, let me figure it out. Okay, guys. For now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rig it. I got a nice set of crimpers and some that uh, buck connectors. I'm going to just do this for TP and then we'll go back later when it's warmer. I'm going to fix this box up better. I want to fiberglass all the seams, you know, just to make it better. Make it bigger and better than what it is now. He did a beautiful job on this box. And I just want to improve it a little bit. And I didn't pay him much for it. He's been a buddy of mine for years. He's done a lot of box build for me. I had a nice one in the Intrigue until my friend sold it on me. You guys can somewhat see that buck connector. Now on this terminal, there's a positive and negative on the terminal. So where I'm going to go... 
drop my light in here so you can see. Is all the way on the right side. So we're just going to reach down and just connect it. Just like that. Alright, that sub's done. Now I'll just take the sub and back you guys out. I'm going to take the sub now since we're done with it. I'm going to pick it up and drop it down in the hole. Make sure there ain't nothing in the way. I'm going to do that. Now, what I'm going to use to secure it is right here. This is what I'm going to use to secure it with. Coarse thread drywall screws. Don't use plywood screws. They're, they're not coarse enough to hold your vibration. They're fine thread. And you want coarse. I've used these for all of my bills. I've never had a problem with it. And they're an inch and a quarter, which are perfect. But, uh, yeah, let's just, uh, show you guys. Let's pull this all up. And you guys are seeing this in real time, how hard it is for these. I just did a set of these subs, and boy, I love them. Did it for a home theater install. And it rattles windows. And the box I had them do it, do it for, well, it was a pretty nice one. It had four of these uh, subs in it for home theater. Had two uh, deep lows set up in it and two uh, mid range uh, based uh, theater subs in it. It had two of these and two uh, mid range home theater subs in it. Which, um, the difference between these and a the mid range, mid range cannot hold the constant pounding than what these can do. So a mid-range is just for what you hear, a mid-range bass. So a mid-range bass is for your home theater use, which it picks up some of your lows, but more of your mid-range, uh, like your chainsaws, stuff like that, and Horflex, which is not bad. Now, I'm using a screw gun. So you guys be very careful because this ain't magnetic. This won't hold my bits. See? It will not hold my bit at all. This is a works. Uh, I'm going to do a review on this on my other channel. The works flip head. I got the set 20 volt lithium ion. Settings all the way down to 1. Chuck speeds at 1. So it's the lowest I can get it. And let's put these in. If you notice how it's working, that's how it should be. It should give you that throw in it. So you can perfect it. It's sensing when to stop the drilling, which is good. I like that. It's not over torquing it where it's going to break the wood, it's just perfect. And then I'll get you guys off camera. I'll get you guys off camera. We'll I'll do the other side, get set up, and I'll show you the insulation in the car. And 
And if you guys notice, I'm pushing the screw as far over as I can get it, so then it'll split the wood. So, man, guys, give me one second. Let me get a hand screwdriver. All right, I've got a hand screwdriver now. We're just going to go through and make sure that they're all down. Wish that one moved. That one moved. That one didn't. That one's good. Alright, there you go. That's all done. Let me put my little screw hiders, as I call them. There we go. And I think the, the, this design of hiding screws would be perfect because if you don't know anything about these subs and somebody tries to steal them, then they're going to be looking very lost. Trying to figure out how to steal your subs out of your car. I like that little design that Power Acoustic did. So, I mean... Kicker's got a nice set of subs out there, the uh, 15 inch, I believe, 15 or 18 that I did. I did a set of kicker subs for a friend, and I like the design on those, but I really didn't care about the power output on them. They kind of sucked. I think they were 15 or 18, they kind of were bottlenecked. I mean, I got a set of old Pro Studio subs, and they're 15s. And these have been done since the 90s. They're old Pro Studio 15s. Two 15s, a mid and a high range. And these suckers hit pretty good. And they're in a pretty good size box, too. These were not custom. They were custom built back in the 90s uh, by Pro Studio. If you guys want to see what they are, and we only found this set of them. There, I cannot find them. There's your model number, and there's that. So those ones, those 15s I have there, we used to use them all the time. Um, with this old tech word sitting here for home theater use. So I'm gonna get going. And those suckers pound hard. But I'm going to get you guys off. You guys are almost dead. So I'm going to get you guys turned off. I'm going to finish setting this up. I'm going to install it in that car. Which is going to be fun. Alright. Catch you guys later. See ya. Okay guys. Here we go. Got the box. Let's put it in the car. Oh that didn't sound good. <laughs> Crack the lens. This is custom built to this car. Here you go guys, it's in. She's in. So you have tripods so I can show you this better. She's in here. She's talking tight against that shock tower and that shock tower. And we'll show you in a second how much room I actually have inside this car. Don't mind the mess, I've had a few cars to repair on the on in a few days. Few days in a row. Okay. Let me open this seat. 
and to move that feet forward so I can get in. And here's the back of it. So, just remember which terminals you used when you hook it up. All my speaker wires and everything still back here, so there's everything. Let me get the amp and let's get it wired in. Alright guys, got the subs installed up. You won't be able to see them. Um, no, you won't be able to see them back there. But I switched, uh, spun them 180 around. Well, this is just a little bass test. I did the best I can. But you cannot hear this system outside. I don't care what you do. Alright, let's get it going then. That's what I'm saying, you can't hear it. And the reason why I spawned them, my trunk ain't pounding so hard. go from being nice, warm, to snow on the ground. Get, uh, I'm gonna get going. So I'll catch you guys later then. I'm gonna get this uploaded for you guys. See ya.